So I'm going to run through some names and you can tell me uh, from the from your experience of working with them what stands out to you the most, right? Uh, director Mishkin. Uh, he's crazy. Uh, Mr. Manikandan. He's uh, one of the most artistic and nature-loving people I've met. Uh, director Lakshmi. She's very fun and... Uh, She's like a super bundle of energy. So what was your sort of first musical memory growing up, would you say? Uh, if I'm going to be really digging deep, then uh, my first musical memory would be uh, uh, my grandfather buying me uh, a Casio VL tone keyboard. I mean, back in the day, there used to be these uh, small keyboards which also had built-in calculator and other things and demo songs and things like that. It, they are not fully formed piano keys but uh, like plastic buttons. And uh, I mean, fiddling around with that uh, is my early memory, earliest memory of music, I, I can say. You sort of had a very unique career. I think you're one of the only, probably one of the handful of composers who sort of um, done work outside of India, um, and you know you've done uh, in in many languages in Telugu, in Malayalam, in Tamil, in Hindi, and in in Sinhalese as well. Uh, did all of these opportunities sort of find you, or like would you say this is you pursuing these opportunities? Uh, it's it's uh, largely I would say it's largely the opportunities finding me. I did pursue very lightly in the beginning. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not going to say that you know it's all, uh, uh, you know, by just by chance. I did, you know, uh, I knew that I always knew that I wanted to you know, take up music as a career. I did, just didn't know how. I did do uh, a, a few initial things, you know, to help me achieve that goal. But after that, it's been all these great opportunities just finding me. I, I mean, I, I still don't don't understand how they happen. But yeah, it's some sort of a sequence of events. So, what is the transition like going from sort of being in a band, performing, to, you know, being in the studio more often and, you know, uh, composing and, you know, going through a lot of lot more thought processes and things like that. What is this transition phase like? I, I don't know if I can uh, talk uh, about the transition uh, per se, but... I could, you know, speak about the difference between, uh, you know, being in a band and uh, being in a live scenario versus being in a studio, being a studio composer. And uh, till about uh, the time I finished college, I was very much a live musician. I was part of uh, many bands and uh, the thrill of being on stage is something that is like unparalleled. It's it's amazing. And... Uh, I don't know if I I really felt the gradual transition, but suddenly I find myself loving being a studio musician more than being a live musician. Um, when you're in a band and when you're in a live act, it, it's a different kind of energy where you have to satisfy a you know a large group of people, a, a, a huge audience. At that moment, you know you have to really focus your energies. Uh, you know satisfying them at that point it, 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 it's 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 uh, i think somewhere uh, being a studio musician gives me more time to spend time with myself like uh, it's a little bit of a personal process whether i'm making music for a film or just making music just for fun i i you it's a little more relaxed it's a much more relaxed process than being a uh, you know, part of a band or uh, a performing musician, if you can call that. I mean, I am I am still performing, and but the only one of the major differences is that my music and my work is recorded, and I can take time to do whatever I want with it and uh, reflect and all those things, and then slowly put it out there for people to consume it. How did the first film opportunity find you? What's the story behind this? So uh, my first film opportunity came from director Mishkin. Uh, with Yudham say, so uh, I uh, I knew Mishkin much before he became a film director. Uh, my father was a sort of mentor to him, 
and uh, they met at a library uh, in chennai in gopalapuram and uh, they it was it was a chance meeting uh, they were both uh, looking at similar books and uh, they could they you know they started discussing something about that particular subject and he started coming home and he's seen me as a little kid uh, this was many many years ago probably 10 years before uh, yudham say happened so and i i by then uh, i was uh, you know learning uh, music and uh, uh, i started playing music i had my keyboard and many of the times he came home he would see me playing music and uh, so yeah i mean and after that uh, our connection sort of like we drifted apart we didn't uh, i don't know what he was doing and uh, suddenly it's you know it shows up uh, a really path breaking film shows up anjade uh, and before that chitram pace daddy actually but uh, and when chitram pace daddy came out we really didn't know who mishkin was because we didn't know him as mishkin but and after anjade and things like that uh, i was at a point where i had to decide what i was going to do with my life do i uh, i studied engineering uh, after school uh, i have an engineering degree in genetic engineering and uh, but my interests were always focused towards music like i said i i knew i wanted to do something in the you know in the music business film industry whatever you call it but i didn't know what to do so i i i i happened to meet mishkin around that time and i i requested him to you know take me under his wing and uh, that's it i i really didn't i didn't uh, ask for a chance to compose music for his movies or anything i just wanted to be around the the scene so and that's what that's what happened for the i think the next two or three years uh, i spent with him and his crew of assistant directors and i was more or less an assistant director i uh, was part of a few films uh, the pre production and post production and shooting and all sorts of things i had a great time so basically i was learning uh and uh, during this time i got the chance to make music for a short film which uh, one of which he directed a uh, uh, set of three short films and uh, soon after that uh, i got the the opportunity to work on yudham say the feature film and yeah that's how it happened so i mean prior to the you you know being approached to work on yudham say were you at all aspiring to be a, a composer for like for, to do scoring to to work on films to be honest uh, not not entirely so that is around the time when uh, i was part of a part of a band called panatella with my friends from school and uh, we uh, three of us the guitarist the drummer and myself uh, we actually uh did you know think about composing music for films as as a trio and we did uh, we worked on a few ads and things like that we composed songs we created song banks to submit to film directors and things but i wasn't uh, i did I, i did want to do something like i didn't uh, have a goal like i have to be a film composer it, it that wasn't really i wanted to at one point actually be a radio jockey because i had a huge collection of music and I, at that point in my naivety i thought uh if you have you know like thousands of mp3s people will give you a, an opportunity to play them on the radio i didn't know the legalities and things like that so anyway i just i wanted to be in the you know in and around music and films i didn't really uh, have a concrete ambition you know to be a composer so what's could would you say you sort of witnessed the transformation of Mr Mishkin from when you first saw him as a young boy to you know then after he's become a director and you you know sort of working around him and then to now you know composing for his film so how 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 did he transform as a person that's uh i mean it's too long back and uh, i do remember some physical transformations i mean um, uh he was much younger when i met him and uh, he was to be very honest uh, there's not too much of a difference between i i i like to answer your question immediately i don't think there was too much of a difference be- before he you know uh, between uh, not too much of a difference between him as a filmmaker and how he was before uh, because he's always had that spirit of knowing and uh, you know knowledge and his interest in music was always there that's sort of our connect like uh, we used to discuss 
so many things and he, in fact he was one of the first persons to encourage me when i was young to compose music rather than play other other people's music and i didn't really when i met him 10 years after uh, you know first meeting him when i was a child it was a little strange but it it was it was like he was the same person just that he directed a film and uh, uh more people got to know about him so yeah. you sort of gravitate towards you know uh unconventional cinema you know it's not like the everyday movies that you've been a part of you know um where does this come from i mean does it, i mean again is this is this these films that find you or you know what what's the magic behind this i don't know but uh, i think uh, to start with yuddham say itself was a great launch pad you know uh, it was not a conventional film with a uh, five songs and things like that and uh, the music was the score uh, was was a huge part of it and that actually put me on to uh, uh, i think after that one of uh, the pivotal films that i worked on was anaim rasulum with rajiv ravi so when you work on such such, such a film with a with such a director people with similar sense sensibilities uh, tend to approach you i mean a lot of people have told me uh, people are still uh, new filmmakers i meet uh, non filmmakers they speak about anayam rasulum and kamati padam and you know uh, yudham say is there but other than that i would say anayam rasulum and uh, kamati padam were uh, sort of like you know some some films uh, people tend to associate you with some films some stories and some sounds and these these films actually uh, i think help me attract people with similar tastes and likes and i think that's how it it's it's been happening so far i mean kamandi padam it, itself is insane you know like i i love like i've grown to love like malayalam cinema and i think kamandi padam was one of the first films malayalam films like i sat down to watch i mean it's 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 a film like you know unlike what we've seen before ever you know sort of the the transformation of of a village turning into sort of a city you know what was the thought process as you, you and the director and everybody that was involved of you know sort of building the film and building the score and and, and the music behind it it's it's uh, usually I've worked on uh, three films with Rajiv Ravi and uh, I think except Anayam Rasulum all the I mean the the other two films uh, took almost like a somewhere between a year and 3 years to complete the work not because we were working every day and we were trying to come up with ideas but it's a very gradual process of uh you don't know how it happens but it happens so the director's strength is uh in nudging you know uh, whichever technician is involved in the right way just a slight push and that's what he did he just slowly kept nudging me towards uh, you know the soundscape the uh, with kamati padam and uh, turumukam more recently what happened the usual process is that uh, you know i'm introduced to the story a script is sent uh, sometimes a script is not sent but uh you know uh, initial rushes and uh, uh the general flavor of the story and you know the core content is sort of revealed little by little through this time uh, either i'm uh, usually what happens is i'm uh, you know called to kerala and i spend a few days there we listen to music which is which you know um which is somewhat in the area of the music he has in mind for the film we watch uh, bits of the film we travel to those places and things like that it's a very uh, organic process and um, i think that's what results in the multi layered deep sort of music which is there in the film you know and it 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 doesn't happen with every film sometimes it happens but in at least in these cases in these examples that's the process it's a very it's not just about composing a tune and matching it to the picture it's sort of uh spending time with the film and the general idea of the film and taking something from it and uh, it's basically living with the film for for a year or so and then slowly executing ideas and then finally it, when it comes to release and things it's lot, there's a lot of technical and mundane stuff which happens but the majority of the work will happen slowly for a few over a few months 
and uh, yeah it's many of the times it's non musical work which happens you you said that you know uh, other than of course uh, funk music and a lot of italian uh, soundscapes uh, one of your favorite or if if i may say your favorite music composer and musician is sanyani le raja what about him that you love the most and what about him just awes you to this day oh many many things about him uh, for one i think it's the i mean his music has actually been uh, path breaking in so many ways it is really innovative stuff uh, in terms of uh, use of synthesizers uh, um, uh, compositional techniques like the technicality like counterpoint and things like that which are which were not a which were not a thing in tamil film music back then he was one of the first composers to introduce or there might have been others but uh, his music is what really shines through even now uh, when you talk about uh, harmony in music i mean indian music tends to be less harmonic than western music you know it's more monophonic and he is one of the pioneers of introducing uh, uh, harmonic music to uh, our film music you know and the way he blended folk music and electronic music is actually really really cool uh, i mean i wish we had you know physical examples of the synthesizers and equipment that were used back then it's it's a it's a sad thing that we didn't really capture all that as well as we should have captured uh, you know uh, back then so many of these amazing songs and background score uh, uh, you know things would have been recorded only with a single mic there's no way way to retrieve it or you know it's all it's it, it didn't really do justice to the so his work uh to answer your question there are just too many things to be in awe of him but this is one thing i could just think of right now have you had the opportunity to meet him yes i have i have met him uh, i mean i have been in the same room as him a uh, few times i have not met him i have not interact- interacted with him but i met him a few times yes what well, what was that what was the feeling like it was amazing i mean there's uh, i had a it was uh, at that point in my life it was a dream come true i had uh, met him for the first time uh, um during the re-recording background score uh, recording of nandalala thanks to mishkin so he called me I, i told him when i knew that he was a composer for nandalala i told him i want to meet him and uh, uh, he in fact told me that i don't know if that can happen it, if if such an opportunity comes ab- comes by i'll tell you so he called me and i just left whatever i was doing and i ran i uh, went to the studio and i just managed to i mean i i was scared that i wouldn't be you know allowed at, after a point into the studio but i just went along with uh, mishkin and uh, i was there in the recording in the control room where uh, they were recording uh, yeah they were doing the background score and uh, there was like probably 40 musicians in the inside the studio and prasad and it was it was beautiful it was it was amazing to listen to a live orchestra playing music which was just written a few minutes ago and uh, and the person who wrote it was there and he was one of my greatest heroes so it was amazing to meet him now tiktok is obviously now banned in india so i don't know if you exactly uh, follow but you know some of your music for example uh, kanniti vupanna is trending today in tiktok and you know people are doing a lot of dance challenges to it and stuff so you created some music that are actually very timeless so now when you go revisit these things and you know re-listen what 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 do you feel uh it feels uh i feel happy i mean uh, but many times i i try to look at it uh, you know from a uh objectively and i i don't uh, many times i don't remember like is this what i did like that's the kind of question which pops into my head but that's because we're constantly changing right all our tastes are changing and uh, that uh, kanniti uponna and the kind of songs that i worked on uh, uh, you know the kutu songs are uh, i mean i i really to be very honest i can't really connect to that right now the present frame of mind i am and i can't connect to it right now and of course it's always nice to you know have a it, it it's a little bit of a surprise and uh, uh, a joyful memory 
when I listen to it. That now, composing for a film like Gazi, for example, it's not again your average film or your everyday film, right? It it has to do a lot with war, and it's just not a regular war. You know, it's it's it has to do with the navy and submarines and things like this. What was that? process like and how, what what were the challenges would you say that you faced during the making of this film yeah so uh, with gazi um it it was it was quite challenging because it's uh, it's i mean i i had not previously worked on a film in that setting like marine warfare so that's quite a specific uh, thing and um it was challenging because um uh, you know although they were in songs i had to you know keep the tempo going with the music with the background score it it was it was not a minimalist uh film with you know usually hollywood films have a little less music indian films tend to have a little more music and they need uh, uh, at least uh, uh you know most of most of the films have end to end music and uh, it's 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 quite challenging to uh you know travel accurately with the ups and downs of it, it, that's that's what takes effort i mean uh, i think with gazi i i did uh, i did the best i could and uh, it it the the difficult part is uh keeping up with the you know the cat and mouse uh, thing that's going on on film musically and uh, yeah that that's sort of the challenging thing too. otherwise it's 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 it it is pretty conventional uh blockbuster sort of music it's it's uh it's not a very subtle thing you know it's not uh it's it's pretty heavy orchestral music and uh, i was i was just you know uh, i had done i i done mugamudi previously but it was a different kind of a thing it was more a tamil thing this was a little more uh, pan pan india it's a national story it's not Trilingue, restricted yeah. to one uh, thing so uh, that was a little challenging for me and yeah that was it so do you keep up with like uh, music like especially in, in tamil nadu or in south india to this day and if so like who are some of like your favorite musicians composers or singers you'd say uh i do uh, i do keep up uh, with the uh, the current music not not uh, too deeply if i may say uh, and santosh santosh narayan is one of my favorite composers uh he's done some really fantastic work over the few years uh, past few years and uh, there are a lot of independent uh, artists uh, who are coming out uh, ofro is a uh, one 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 such artist i like i there's a lot of really interesting uh stuff that's coming out I would like to be a little more connected to what's happening, but yeah. Uh, what's what's about uh, what about you? You've mentioned Mr. Santosh actually uh, quite a few times that he's one of your favorite musicians. What about him like strikes you and stands out to you? It, the uh, what I what is uh, striking to me about him is is like incredible clarity in thought, the melody and the arrangements and everything is like super clean and neat, and. Uh, that's what i like about him yeah. uh do you also keep up with films and if so like who are some of like your favorite filmmakers as well and you know i i had asked this question uh from uh another composer as well and you know uh, like there there was sort of almost a refusal uh, to give me an answer it's like uh, i don't want to ask an opportunity uh-huh. sort of from filmmakers but who are some of the filmmakers you would feel like you know i mean i i'd i'd love to be a part of that film or be a part of like one of his films or her films uh i would say tyagaraj and kumar raja okay uh i really like his work um, i think he's made only two films yeah so both as a director only two films yeah, yeah he's directed only two yeah. films and uh, i really love both of them i uh, met him uh during uh, uh, aranya kandam i mean we i think we would, he was in the theater when we were watching the film probably yeah some really long back in satyam and uh and super deluxe both of them are uh, fantastic works of art i feel and yeah if your question was if there's somebody i would like to work with then i would say tyagarajan kumar raja uh, 
Is this sort of like a different approach when you switch languages uh, in in films? And is there sort of a different approach when you switch like industries? You know, you work in three, four languages here in India, and then you work outside of India, you work documentary films. So when sort of the, you know, one of my uh, favorite composers from Sri Lanka, he's spoken about the Sinhalese language. And he said, in different parts of Sri Lanka, everybody speaks the language in a different rhythm. All right. So this different rhythm means regionally, there's a different sort of scape of music in every region. So how does this, you know, apply to the films that you work on? Sort of like, is, is every language film different to you? Um, not entirely. I would say uh, the difference would be in the treatment of the film, the director, how it's been shot. And uh, it, it would, I would say director, actually. If, uh, to be honest, um, if you ask me, a film should have as little music as possible. That's uh, that's that's the best way to go about it. I mean, there are there have been so many classics which have absolutely no music. Some of the greatest TV shows, films, and uh, you know, there are so many so many of these things without any music. I mean, there could be some sound, but uh, music should be used sparingly. Is what I feel. And uh, the use of music in different films, uh, be it whichever country, usually in the West, it's a little less. In Asia, it's a little more. In uh, in Tamil, it's quite a lot. In Malayalam, it's less. In the two Sinhalese films I've worked on, it's very less. And once again, it depends on the director, whoever's uh, his vision. Like if a, if a director feels... And many times I tend to go with that. Like I don't want to... Uh, composing music for a film is a very collaborative work and uh, I try to match you know match the director's vision in whichever thing I'm working like if I if I if I underscore for a film which is uh, it's a commercial film then I'm it's it's not going to really work so uh, usually it does not really depend on which country the film is coming from it depends it depends on the director and the way it's shot you know things like that but I mean, uh, on the note of something you just mentioned, you've also made conscious efforts to uh, sort of reduce the presence of music in a film. For example, uh, the film you work with director Lakshmi, you sort of, what I've heard is that you made conscious efforts to not have as much music or wherever you felt like the music was not necessary, you sort of given your input and said, let's not have anything over there. So would you say you're not, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming any technician that works on a film, their their input or their their work would be to you know sort of to show off their work or to show off their skills or make their presence more prominent. So, would you say you're not you your your final goal is not to you know show your skills or rather to you know make the film work or do what's best for the film? Yeah, I I would say like I said, it, it's uh, my work would be tending more towards what's best for the film. In after that criterion is satisfied, I would like to you know do something for myself. Like if I if I have a there are only four pieces of music in a film, I would try to do my best within those four pieces and showcasing my skill or whatever would be secondary because I am working for a film. When I am do, doing something independently, I can do whatever I want. And uh, uh, but a film is it's it's really you know, there is a boundary and you have to really be within that. How does the business of uh, film music work? What exactly goes on behind that? And, you know, uh, in one of the interviews, uh, you've mentioned that, you know, you have no idea how, you know, film uh, music and the business of it works. But that was sort of almost a decade ago. So <laughs> within the last decade, have you learned anything about No, me? actually not. I still not really uh, gone into it. But I know there's uh, royalties uh, which, you know, keep, which really keep many artists afloat. Uh, that's a great thing. That's, that's one thing I know, you know, I am registered with a royalty agency. Most, all, all artists should do that, you know, they, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to do, you know, have for a rainy day. Other than that, I, I really don't know the kind of business that happens. There, there's a lot. And usually when you're tied with a big company, with a production company, with big stars, 
the business is really huge and something happens there i i don't really know i i just know that it's 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 something big i i have not gotten into the details because they don't really interest me much do you hear uh, you know from your peers and just uh in the in the film industry do you hear more positive things about the business of music or do you do you hear more complaints um i don't really interact with my, you know the peers uh, in my industry much but uh, whatever little interaction that's happened i think it's it's pretty much it's more positive you know people are it seems like people are doing a lot of work and for that to happen people should be satisfied you know so i think it's good it's mostly good uh, i although we we i know that in terms of royalties and uh, you know uh, ownership of work and things like that we still have a little distance to go compared to the west but i think it's generally in a good place right now do you gravitate towards the personality of the director and the other people involved in the film as well when you're working in a film uh or is it just like you know whether you gel with them or not like you know if you like the film do you you go ahead with it uh i no i i don't remember doing much waiting for energies to match and things like that people are different you know usually uh usually things work out usually things work out and if they don't work out then you have to put up with it and keep your end of the uh, you know commitment with things but i mean that said uh, i've had some really wonderful experiences with the people i worked with and thankfully i've not had any non vibing experiences yeah on that note you know if you the reason i asked you this question the previous question was that you sort of said that you know you would want to work on a film peacefully which means you get paid on time you get paid that paid what you deserve and you know everything you know is is well and good so how do you now deal with the highs and lows in your career you know perhaps have you had a uh, uh, occasions or a, a, a time in your career and your life where you know sort of a film didn't work out or you were disappointed about something or it, with, with within your, the scope of your work or outside the scope of your work and then you still had to continue with the other film so how do you deal with the highs and lows of your career and how does it affect like your work uh, i've realized that these highs and lows keep happening you can't uh, 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 especially especially in a place like india uh, things are not so not always on paper things are not always on paper and uh, people make promises that they don't keep but if you're going to you know be stuck on that it's difficult to go forward and uh, in a, in a, in a, you know if a film or a, if a director or a production company or somebody is not treating you the way you're supposed to be treated then you're not going to feel like giving your best for that project and that's how i look at it 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 depends upon uh, what they want from from you you know uh, like i said if it's if it's a if everything is peaceful the work will be peaceful that that holds good for any industry any any job any commitment uh this is the same way for you know films and uh, the same thing will apply to a director or a camera person or any 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 anybody so yeah and the way i would deal with lows and things like that would be you know just ponder about it like see what i could have done better you know if i don't uh, you know it might be my fault if i didn't um, you know make a written commitment you know make sh- you know have a con- contract in place and things like that you know, everything is a learning experience so i would make sure it, i don't repeat the mistake the next time and i would just go about my work but uh, to answer your question about it affecting work it would definitely affect work if uh, if i'm not happy the music is not going to the output is not going to be happy so like i said it, it it uh, holds true for any any profession any person can you uh, speak about some of the things that you're working on or something that you've completed working on and that we're about to see in the near future yeah so uh, i've been uh, working on a few films uh, the past uh, uh, couple of years uh, i worked on a telugu film called siddha which is uh, 
which is completed it's uh, directed by this person called mahi mahi vi raghav and i worked with, with him on two films previously one is anand o brahma and the other is yatra so this is our third uh, feature film outing and uh, i'm working on a film called neel ira it's a it's a tamil film and it's based on the um, peacekeeping force uh, um, area in the sri lankan uh, you know war during the 1980s uh, it's a drama and it's a, it's a very it's a very poignant film and it's directed by this person called somidharan uh, it's his debut and it's uh, produced by stone bench and uh, i'm starting work on a film called paradise it's directed by prasanna vitanage he is uh, uh, i previously worked with him on gadi and uh, yeah and i've just finished work on a hindi film called berlin it's a spy drama set in the 1980s late 80s and uh, it's it's uh, set in the uh, you know uh, time around the end of the cold war so it stars uh, apar shakti kurana and uh, ishwak uh, singh it's it's uh, it's very interesting because it's it's a it's a spy film but it's not a an, an action spy film it's more cerebral and uh, it looks and feels very very interesting it's directed by this uh, director called atul sabarwal and uh, produced by z so those are something that i'm working on right now awesome very